In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. A very warm welcome to you all to this live stream vigil mass for the third Sunday of Advent, what we call Gaudete, or Rejoice Sunday, where we wear rose vestments and light the rose candle on the Advent wreath. And today the theme is about John the Baptist, how he was the joyful messenger, the forerunner of the Lord Christ, the last in the long and distinguished line of prophets. A voice cries in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord. So let us listen and turn to the Lord in penitence and in faith. Heavenly Father, you prepare us for the coming of your Son. Forgive us our unreadiness to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are proclaimed by John the Baptist. Help us also to prepare your way. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you speak through the prophets. Make us attentive to hear your word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be shaken, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by telling the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we come now to be attentive to our readings from Holy Scripture. And our first two readings today are read by Sarah, who's one of our volunteer children's workers, and Ariana in year six of Emmanuel School. You could follow the readings on the link that's on the website and on the email that went out this week. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former de de devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This 
is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response. The Lord has done great things for us. The Lord has done great things for us. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with songs of joy. The Lord has done great things for us. Then said they among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has indeed done great things for us and therefore we rejoiced. The Lord has done great things for us. Restore again our fortunes, O Lord, as the riverbeds of the desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed, will come back with shouts of joy, bearing their sheaves with them. The Lord has done great things for us. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of our God. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you the Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let's have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they have been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you a baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptized. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Send your holy angels to watch over us in loving heart, that on our lips we found your truth, and in our hearts the fire of your love, for his sake who died for love of our love, Jesus Christ our Lord.
Amen. The words from our second reading, beautifully read tonight by Ariana. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Really? That seems a very tall order, doesn't it? Especially in this year of all years, when we've seen so much illness, death and bereavement on a global scale, with those who are disadvantaged and in minority communities continuing to suffer at a far greater scale than others. And yet, the Church's calendar, in a tradition going back many centuries, we find ourselves at Gaudete, or Rejoice Sunday, when rose vestments are worn, and we light the rose-coloured candle as a cairn representing the midpoint in our journey through Advent. And on this third Sunday of Advent, we traditionally focus on John the Baptist. We heard a great deal about him last week as the last of the great tradition of the long line of prophets who both comforted the afflicted and discomforted the comfortable. But today's Gospel from St John, with a note of excitement, is here to temper last week's somewhat foreboding message. For today, John boldly walks onto the stage of God's gracious dealing with his beloved people with an announcement he can barely contain. He realizes his own role in this unfolding story, a necessary but transitory role foretold by the older prophets themselves. For he, only he, can discern and recognize in the crowd the face of the anointed of God, God's decisive intervention into human history to usher in his radical new reign of love, welcome, hospitality, and unconditional acceptance. All the older prophets had longed to see what John sees, and John's joy today is unbounded, even in the midst of the historically challenging circumstances and the darkness of his own day. For Jesus, as the anointed one of God, is the full realization of that beautiful prophecy of Isaiah in our first reading, as one who comes to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, release to prisoners, and above all, the jubilee year of the Lord's favour. The Anointed One is the one who comes to shed light on much of the darkness of the world and hope into many of the apparently dire and hopeless situations we find ourselves in. Above all, the Anointed One, as Isaiah says, will build up the ancient ruins, raise up the former devastations, repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. The Anointed One is one who embodies God's endless and limitless justice, God's compassion and God's mercy. No wonder then that John was so excited to recognise in the face and the crowds of the people coming to be baptised God's own Anointed One. For God is decisively now intervening in human history to turn the world upside down, thereby setting it back on its feet once again, so that original blessedness of creation might be restored. And as verse 10 and verse 11 of Isaiah 61 say in our first reading, in and through the anointed one, the earth is to see the full and utterly unparalleled nature and the glory of God right here in our midst. Righteousness, salvation, justice and praise, prophesies Isaiah, all spring up throughout the earth because in the face of the Anointed One, we see precisely what God is like. And just as in a garden, in good and favourable circumstances, cannot help but grow what's planted in it, so the world cannot help but respond to the righteous act of God in sending the Anointed One, none other than his own Son. So herein lies the reason for the rejoicing in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians and the joy which is at the heart of our faith, however slow we and they are to recognise it. One of the things I find so challenging about those TV evangelists that you see on cable channels and elsewhere is they seem to treat joy as synonymous with happiness. 
Now, to my mind, those words are not synonymous. Happiness is a more superficial, a more two-dimensional emotion than joy. Happiness may cause a warm feeling to spread throughout us because something's happened. It may cause us to laugh out loud or to giggle. But so frequently, it's a fleeting emotion, easily expressed in a smiley emoticon, readily sent as a text on our smartphone. It's certainly a huge challenge to maintain that fleeting, surface-level happiness amidst all the tragedy, darkness, and apparent hopelessness of the world. On the other hand, the joy that we see in Isaiah's prophecy, in the announcement of John the Baptist, and in Paul's words to the Thessalonians, is about something far more profound, far more enduring, even in the circumstances of our world of today. For this sense of joy is more synonymous with the hope which is at the heart of this great Advent season of faithful waiting upon God, and why indeed we may speak of Advent predominantly as a joyful season. The joy and the hope of the Anointed One of God in the face of Jesus the Messiah is that in God's gracious economy, darkness and evil will never ever have the last word. The joy and the hope of the Anointed One of God is one which may not bring about a superficial happiness, a kind of high on a celestial ecstasy pill, but rather it will bring light and hope to the often tragic and challenging situations of our own lives and the life of the world. And indeed, all around us, we see signs of that more profound joy, that more profound hope of the radical reign of God breaking into the world now, in the lives of those who stand up against racism and discrimination of all kinds, in those who work to ensure the equal rights of all, recognizing in each and every human being a unique and precious mirroring of the life and the love of God, in those praying and working for the release of Nazanin and all those others unjustly imprisoned throughout the world in those whose transformational work more locally is in responding to the needs in all our communities, but most especially the most needy, in the work of the NW6 Food Hub or the Child's Hill Food Bank, from which those two food banks, over 300 households, receive packages today. And perhaps most significantly of all, we see that deep joy and that hope in those who have laboured long and hard to research and produce a vaccine to turn around and mitigate the effects of COVID-19. These are the sort of things which will provide, as Isaiah says, a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. This is the deep joy which John the Baptist was full to bursting point and which he could hardly contain himself as he announced the anointed one of God, the one who is Emmanuel, God with us, right here in the life of the world. No wonder then that today's Sunday, at the heart of this wonderful Advent season, is Gaudete, or Rejoice Sunday. For the hope and the joy which it celebrates is what gives us our character as the pilgrim people of God, who continue on our journey through all the trials and tribulations of life, but rooted, grounded, and comforted in the hope and the joy of the Anointed One of God. Amen. So with Christians throughout the world and down the ages, we celebrate the wonder and the joy of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father, we pray for the good estate of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world, for its unity and its peace, that in the joy of this Advent season we may abound in hope, and show that love and that hope, that joy to those around us. So we pray especially for our persecuted sister and brother Christians the world over. We pray for all who lead in our church, for Justin, our Archbishop, and our diocese, for Sarah, our Bishop, for Robert, our area Bishop. We pray for our partner diocese of Angola, Mozambique and New York, and our own partner parish of St. Michael's and West 99th Street, Manhattan, for Mother Kate Flexer, for all the people there, and for all the churches and chaplaincies of this deanery of Camden. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So we pray for our world groaning in travail in all its darkness. We pray for an end to violence, hostility and hatred within and between peoples, for an end to racism and discrimination of all kinds, for a proper respect to be accorded to all human life in all its myriad expressions and forms. So we pray for all world leaders, for Elizabeth, our Queen, for all in authority under her, for our Prime Minister and our government, for Tulip, our Member of Parliament, for our ward councillors in these wards of Fortune Green and West Hampstead, for Georgia, the leader of our council, for Maryam, our mayor. So too we pray for those parts of the world that do not have the democracy we most take for granted. We pray for a just and equitable distribution of the world's resources, both in terms of food, healthcare and education as we pray for all countries undergoing transitions and new chapters. So we pray for the people of the United States of America and for the President and Vice President-elect. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we pray for this community which we serve, we give thanks for the joy and hope of your kingdom, which is abounding in our, in our community today giving thanks for the work of the NW6 Food Hub and the Childs Hill Food Bank. We pray for all those households who receive packages today. We pray for the community centres of our parish, for Sidings Community Centre and the Community Association of West Hampstead, for all the local COVID-19 mutual help organisations. And especially in this community, we continue to pray for Nazanin as she continues under further arrest in Iran for her swift, merciful and just release, for Richard and for Gabriella. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So we pray for those who are sick or suffering, whether in mind, body or spirit. On our own parish prayer list, we pray for David Goodall and John McAnally, Pete Bonish, Jenny Richards, Gerald Kester, Betsy Williams, France, Natasha Howes, Rachel Rose, Dorothy Fritzer Shanks, Betsy Howie, India de Bono, Pascal O'Donoghue, Richard Stapp, Tessa, Nancy Gerira, Desiree Hawkins, Bishop Alexander and Shamin Malik, James Keelthy, 
Mr. and Mrs. Luke and Mr. and Mrs. Mason, Father Alan Chiddick, Felicity Dunn, Maria Keith, Eva Moria, Sunder Shankotchar, Gerard Ruth, Di McIntyre, Zara Movalali, Neusta Van Rennen, Deborah Bruce, Ivan Pring, Alison Fisher, Marge Goodall, Pam McAnally and Penny. So too we pray for all those who live with the coronavirus. We give thanks for the work of all doctors, nurses, healthcare workers and key workers, for scientists who search a vaccine, for those who continue to shield at home, and for those who love and care for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And of your charity, pray for the souls of the departed. Amongst the recently departed, for the soul of Clary Mendy. So too we pray for any who have died alone or afraid with no one to pray for them. And all those we have known and loved who have died in past years. Those who have helped us on our own life's pilgrimage and taught us of your love. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and at light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory, and may their memories be a blessing. And finally, in a few moments' silence, we offer our own prayers before the throne of grace. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Baptist, and all your saints, we commend ourselves, all for whom we pray, and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who live in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you all. Lord our God, as your servant John the Baptist prepared the way for the coming of your Son, make us, your servants, ready for his coming in these holy mysteries, who is Lord for ever and ever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the God-bearer, the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, or honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. By this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, be eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. An opportunity to avail yourself of an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for these heavenly gifts. Kindle in us the fire of your Spirit, that when your Christ comes again, we may shine as lights before his face, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Before our final blessing, I thank you for joining us for this live stream Mass. This week um, we have Mass live streamed and in person um, on Monday at quarter past eight, that's an earlier time, and on, on Wednesday at half past twelve. And of course Mass in person tomorrow is at eight o'clock, 9.15 and 10.30. And next Saturday, I don't think we can live stream that, but we'll be having carols in the churchyard. So maybe there's a live stream service a little bit later than usual. The Lord be with you. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Oh, oh.